Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to discuss an incredibly important topic which is scheduling your second suite conversion project to ensure that it stays within your allotted time frame. Any delays in your project translates to dollars lost because you're paying the holding cost for the property. And money that you're not getting either in rent or from the sale of the property will definitely affect your bottom line. Of course, this doesn't apply to just second suite conversion projects, but really any large renovation. Before we get started, if you enjoy our content, then please click the like button just as we're getting started on this video. This really helps get the content to more people so that they can also benefit. Also, please hit the subscribe button so that you automatically get our videos as soon as it comes out. Additionally, if you're interested in learning more about investing in second suites and garden suites, or learning more about our upcoming Second Suites Profit Formula Trading Program, then sign up for our webinar at sweeteditions.com slash webinar, or click on the link in the description. Now, whether you're managing the project yourself, or if you're hiring a general contractor or project manager to take care of the entire renovation for you, you're gonna have to set a proper schedule yourself. So for this video, we're going to offer eight important tips to help you with scheduling a successful second suite conversion project. Tip number one, the first thing to consider is that if you're acquiring a new property, try to get as long a closing period as possible. This will allow you to do a bunch of preparation work before you do any physical work on the property. A long closing period allows you to take advantage of the existing owner still paying for all the expenses of the property while you get down to work. Pre-closing preparation work may involve minor variances with the city, design and permit work, and your designer, possibly engineering services as well as getting contractor quotes. Good contractors are booked months or even a year in advance, so you need to get started quickly. In most cases, cities will allow you to submit a permit application before you take possession of the property as long as you get authorization from the current owner. But they typically won't issue the actual permit until you own the house. Now, if you already own the property, then this of course doesn't apply to you. Once you know when you take possession of the property, you can then start creating a schedule. Tip number two, our second important point is to create a schedule using software or a simple spreadsheet. List the entire scope of the project from start to finish. This would include designing your second suite, the permitting process, as well as every step involved in the renovation. At a high level, this would include exterior work, framing and structural work, plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. And then insulation, drywall, windows and doors, kitchens and bathrooms, and interior finishes. For students who are participating in our upcoming training program, we share a simple Gantt chart spreadsheet that we use for all of our projects. Tip number three, the next thing to consider is creating an appropriate amount of time for permanent work and each trade as part of the renovation process. The key number that I'm gonna share with you is 50%. Whatever the expected time frame is for your designer and the city permitting process, add an additional 50%. So for example, if the city is expected to complete the process in three weeks, you should allow at least four and a half weeks. In terms of the renovation, if you're managing the project yourself, ask the individual subcontractors what their estimated time of completion for the project is and allow for an additional 50%. If you're hiring a general contractor and they tell you it's gonna take three months to complete, plan for four and a half months. Trust me, you're definitely gonna need it. Okay, tip number four, create some buffer room during certain stages in the renovation. Once you know the timeframes for each subcontractor, you need to also create a bit of a gap between some of the trades. For example, there may need to be a few extra days between your insulation company and your drywaller. This is because you'll need to get the inspection passed before you can start drywalling. And it may be difficult to get the inspector out on a certain day depending on how busy they are. During the process, there are going to be four to five inspections. So expect that you'll need to create this extra buffer four or five different times during the whole renovation process. Now, this doesn't mean that the project has to stop entirely. They can certainly be work that continues in other aspects, which takes us to our next tip. Okay, tip number five, determine which trades can work simultaneously and which trades can continue to work while you're waiting on an inspection. For example, you can certainly have a carpenter working on the main unit while having a plumber or electrician working on the second suite. Or you might have exterior work that can be done while you're waiting for an inspection or someone else is working inside the house. Generally speaking, you want to avoid scheduling HVAC contractors, plumbers and electricians at the same time because they usually work in teams and too many people can really get in the way of each other. Also because these components overlap in terms of location and can get really messy when you're trying to schedule them simultaneously. 
Typically, you want to bring in HVAC contractors first for any ductwork that needs to be completed. Then after framing is done, you would bring in the plumber to connect all the drains and pipes, and then the electrician before your inspection. Additionally, be mindful of the number of vehicles that are parked on the driveway and streets. Your neighbors won't appreciate a pile of cars and trucks servicing your house every day for three months. Tip number six, schedule the work to be completed during normal working hours as much as possible. Ensure that you stay within the city bylaws for noisy work. This is generally 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Saturday, of course, excluding Sundays and holidays, but double check the city bylaws for your town or city. Now, if you have to do work outside of normal working hours, make sure it's quiet work. This means no drilling, banging, sawing, or hammering. The last thing you need is an upset neighbor calling the city or even the police to complain. Okay, tip number seven. This one is optional, but you can set up a penalty or reward system for your contractors to keep them on or ahead of schedule. Some homeowners and investors will ask to put some clauses in their contractor's agreement to stipulate milestone or final completion deadlines and have a dollar amount as a penalty for each day that they're late in completion or a dollar amount as a reward for each day they're ahead of schedule. There's no set standard here. The idea is that you want to minimize vacancy times to protect your bottom line. So the daily amount may be equivalent to the rental income that you may have received otherwise. It's just one extra incentive for the contractor to get things done faster. Of course, he's gonna to have to be okay with this and it's a discussion that you wanna have before signing the contract. Obviously, there are gonna be things that are outside of their control that it wouldn't be fair to penalize them for. These may include delays from the city, inspector scheduling issues, and the big one these days, which is the supply of materials. So this segues us to our next point, tip number eight. Order any materials you need way in advance. Because of broad supply chain issues worldwide, many different construction materials are taking considerably longer to get delivered. We certainly noticed the lumber shortages in the past year. Now there are shortages or delays in everything from electrical supplies to plumbing fixtures, kitchen cabinets to windows and doors especially windows and doors. I'm hearing about custom windows and doors that are taking as long as four months to get delivered. So make sure to plan ahead, whether you're managing the project yourself or hiring a general contractor, make sure that you have a complete list of all the required materials for your project, and then ensure that you or your contractor has the materials available on the scheduled date of installation. Okay, so that covers our recommended tips to help with scheduling your second suite conversion project. We hope you found this information helpful. If there's one takeaway for this video, it's to sit down for a couple of hours before you start your project and plan it out as best as you can on a calendar. Of course, this schedule will change as things progress, but you at least have a framework to start with. This is much better than haphazardly going with the flow of things. Always stay on top of your schedule. Of course, we get into these discussions in greater detail in our upcoming Second Suites Profit Formula training program coming up in mid-October. And we also have a spreadsheet Gantt chart that we use for every project that is available for all of our students as well. If you're interested or want to learn more about our training, click on the link in the description. We also have an upcoming webinar training where we discuss investing in Second Suites and Garden Suites. The link for that is also in the description or you can go to sweeteditions.com slash webinar to sign up. So what are your thoughts on scheduling a second suite renovation? In addition to our eight tips, do you have any tips of your own that you would like to share that can help someone schedule their renovation for success? Please share them below and feel free to leave any questions or comments. Again, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can get more content out there to you and other folks as well. And share this video with someone who you think will benefit from it. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.